Okay, uh, welcome back to Shadow. Um, uh, we did the pure dark route last time, and uh, this time we're basically doing that again, but doing the hero ending instead. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do a few different missions instead of just doing all dark this time, just to be a just to make it a little bit different. But um, I have a new guest today as well. So uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Aaron, or the Megman Kingdom. That's my YouTube channel name, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't uploaded any videos in a while, though, so I don't know. Maria. Oh, yeah, I'm here for Shadow the Hedgehog this time around. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you've really been on my channel before. I, I think you might have been in a, a Crash Bandicoot stream at one point, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think I remember, yeah, I was in a Crash Bandicoot stream once, like, a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I don't think we've really talked that much after that. Mm -hmm. So what's your experiences with, uh, with this game? I don't have time for this human. Uh, so I remember, like, uh, a good while ago, I think I did a commentary for this, and I've, like, I've heard many opinions of this game, like, both good and bad. Like, yeah. I have a friend who absolutely loves this game, and then I know other people who, like, hate it. <laughs> it's, like, all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've think I think I've come to the realization that I'm I, I feel like indifferent, like I this I have a very love it love love it hate hate it relationship with this game where I I like a lot of the ideas, but um, the missions aren't always the greatest, um, and <laughs> the way they go about the morality system specifically is extremely flawed. Yeah, like, I know that you have to, like, beat this game multiple times to experience all the content, and that just kind of gets, like, really, like, boring at some point, right? Yeah, like, you have to play this specific opening stage ten times, and... Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, I... I feel like it would have been better if they just had a definitive dark and hero ending, and it was just mm -hmm. a simple level-by-level -level structure, instead of just forcing you to get the 10 different endings to get a final story, because that kind of just ruins the whole point of having a mo morality system to begin with, I find. Yeah. Yeah, like, requiring you to get all the endings is kind of, like, a stupid thing. I think it would be nice if, like, all the endings were kind of, like, a hidden, like, or I don't know, it's, like, an optional thing you can do. Yeah. Or otherwise, like, another way to handle it would be maybe to make it so that, uh, like, you can maybe, like, reload a save file and then go and take it path that way. Yeah, that'll be good, because yeah, like, the way they do it is just, I don't know, it, it makes it so if you, if you just do one ending, you only get like 40 minutes to an hour worth of game time, but if you get, if you go for final story, that also requires you to do a lot of the tedious missions and whatnot, and it's just kind of a lose-lose scenario, which kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like when it comes to this game, like, the gameplay is like basically a lot like uh, the Sonic Adventure game, right? Except you have a gun now. Yeah, this is, I'm, as far as I'm aware, this is running on the Heroes engine, and I think, <laughs> I've heard that Heroes is a heavily modified version of the engine used in SA2. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> so pretty reasonable. much. Right. Yeah, yeah, like both were released in the GameCube, like, yeah. makes sense. God knows why they made it so slippery, though. Mm -hmm. This shadow always looks like he's ice skating for some reason. Yeah. I suppose it makes sense with the, like, this weird, like, hover boot shoes or whatever he has, but... It can be a little bit annoying. Like, it's... If you're not careful about where you're going, it can be really easy to just kind of slide off edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems pretty simple. Did that do that? Yeah. I haven't seen you use that gun a single time yet. <laughs> Is that thing ever used? I was uh, just holding it for fun. <laughs> so sometimes, I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That makes sense, like, 
Yeah. Sometimes you... Like... It's usually... When there's like, hordes of enemies or like, guys with big health where... Guns are... Mo the most beneficial. Because the smaller guys you can just take out in like, two homing attacks usually. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite interesting that this game has health bars now for all the enemies. Like, that's yeah. like something which Sonic almost never does. Like, yeah, I know they did. They kind. I know um, Heroes did that, but I, f I feel like that was mainly due to the power characters. But they. Most of the time, enemies just go down in one hit in these games. <laughs> which I think is fine for a platformer. Yeah. I can't think of many. Platformers that have multi-hit enemies, now that I think about it. Yeah. I, you wouldn't really call it a platformer, but like, God of War has some like, pretty strong enemies. But, that's, that's not really yeah. a platformer. But, yeah. Like, that's the one game which I can think of, which I've played recently, like the original one. Like, you have to do quite a lot of hits just to go with the most enemies. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of games that have platforming elements in them. <laughs> That... What are these bars for, exactly? Like, the red and the green bars? Okay, so, uh, if you... Okay, so, if you, uh, primarily do bad things, you get the red red bar going up. Um, and mm -hmm. that... If you get that to the top, you get Chaos Blast. Um, and press and Y will basically... It's basically just a massive explosion, as it sounds. Um, mm -hmm. but the better benefit to it is... As long as that's active, as well as as well as the other bar, which gives you chaos control, um, both of those just gives you infinite ammo, which is like okay. <laughs> you're also. I think you're also invincible as well. Um, so the the ammo thing is just inherently way more useful. Mm -hmm. um, but besides that, um, the other thing that dark and hero points do is if you. Say you're doing a dark mission and you and you do like and you kill up some aliens that gives you hero points. The hero points will actually subtract from your dark points, and that will determine what what score you get at the end. So you have to you have to keep in mind what you're killing depending on the mission you're doing. Mm -hmm. I see. So like, uh, I imagine that like killing all the bad guys it seems to like. Still like rack up dark points based on like what you were doing before. Yeah. Like, what's considered a good and bad thing is like just breaking the barriers and stuff usually gives you dark points. And, like... Um, usually breaking the terrain and killing gun soldiers and whatnot gives you dark points. Uh, mm -hmm. and stuff like extinguishing flames, uh, killing the aliens and stuff gives you the good points. Hmm. That's not. Emergency broadcast to all mobile <laughs> yeah, he's like right here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How you doing, guys? I. He's moving right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like. <laughs> I'm I'm going to the store to buy my own d dead or alive copy. What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you? You don't remember anything, do you? But you will in time. Um. So how much do you know about uh the the story? I guess. Uh. What and what's your what's your general take on it? Um. When it comes to the story of this game, I don't know too much really. Like, I know a bit, of, a lot of the backstory of like Shadow, Shadow himself, at least what happened in Sonic Adventure 2 from me watching Sonic X. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they covered the story pretty well there. Mm -hmm. like, it was sort of like Shadow, Maria, and like that the doctor and all that stuff. Mm. But when it comes to Shadow the Hedgehog itself as a game, I, I'm not sure completely what happens in like, a lot of this game. Okay. I remember. When I first watched Sonic X, um, it was before I played the adventure games. Um, so when when I when I found SA One in the store one time, my mindset was literally just, 
Oh, oh, this is this is a game like Sonic X. This is great. Like I, I didn't realize yeah. that Sonic X was the one adapting the adventure games. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah it's like I still haven't played the Sonic Adventure games, but I've like I've been in commentaries where like uh, people have played it before, and it seems like pretty faithful how like uh, the like anime series like managed to go and like cover the games. Yeah. You really don't see that very, like, uh, often for, like, uh, I guess, like, anime that are based off of, like, video games. Yeah, they're usually, like, they're, they usually try and tell their own stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Rouge. Turn of her. Yeah. Well, she just kind of follows along. <laughs> yeah. Uh, f so a fun little thing you can do, actually, um, that I don't know if a lot of people know is that if you plug a second controller in, they uh, you can have like someone else control the uh, the other other character. Um, oh. I don't think they can really do much. I I know for a fact they can't pick up any guns. It'll be really yeah. hilarious seeing some of those char some of these characters wield like firearms, but this is a light speed. Oh, that's pretty good though. Like, have you ever tried the multiplayer before? This game? Um, I, I remember. I think the first time I played or saw this game was actually one of. My, I was at a friend's house, and uh, I remember playing the multiplayer a lot in that. I don't know if I don't know if I've tr uh, played uh, the single player with anyone else before though, but. I see. Yeah. Reminds me a bit of like, uh, I don't know if you ever played Secret of Mana, like on the SNES. Oh, Maybe that's, that, that's coming, that was, is that released on the Switch now, or? Yeah, it is on the Switch, it's like a collection, the Secret of Mana collection I think they created. And okay. they even translated the third game finally. So, but yeah, that game basically, the way it works is like, throughout the game, you get like, new characters, or like part of your party. And as you get new characters, you can like, you get three in total eventually. And, like whenever you get a new character in the game, you can actually like have a second person or third person play as them. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I really, I want to check out the Secret uh, Mana uh, games at some point because it, they look like um, they're pretty fun games from the trailers I saw. <laughs> yeah, but especially with this remake of like Secret of Mana Three, which why not three? Then it looks like. It's, called, it's weird how like the naming works because like in America, like at least they called. It, like Secret of Mana One. Okay, anyway, so they're all called Saiken Densetsu in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So the first Saiken Densetsu game was released on the Game Boy, and they renamed it as Final Fantasy Adventure when they released it in the U.S. Huh. Yeah. That's really weird. Yeah. So when Saiken Densetsu Two came out, they didn't call it Final Fantasy Adventure Two. Oh no, they did. They just called it Secret of Mana instead. <laughs> Yeah, let's confuse everyone even more. It's yeah. you gotta love how like, um, uh, what is it? Final Fantasy Four is got localized as Final Fantasy Two. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, I so like, oh. kind of get why they did it like that, but in hindsight, it just makes it confusing. Yeah. Imagine when Final Fantasy VII came out, everyone was just like, wait, where did the other games go? Did I miss something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what happens when you uh, end up localizing games late in the series, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, with Secret of Mana. So, like, the third game, Psych and Densetsu 3, they just, I think, it never came out in America, actually, until, like, just last year. They finally translated it. Hmm. I think they're calling it now, like, it's like Temple of Mana or something. Oh. I, I can actually look it up. Okay. I think the Trials of Mana, that's what it's called. Oh, okay. Uh, so what kind yeah. of RPGs are the Mana games like? Are they, is it like turn-based or like action? Like what kind of Oh, it's stuff? like, uh, yeah, it's basically like, uh, full like, uh, yeah, like a real-time like RPG kind of. Like, okay. there's a lot of spells that you can do that, I don't, I think they like freeze time, like whenever you use a spell, but like the general gameplay is all done in real time. Kind of like Legend of Zelda. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, if you've ever played like Link to the Past, it's very much in that style. Oh, that may- okay. That actually makes me a lot more interested in trying it then. Because mm -hmm. I always- I assumed it was like a turn-based thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting, like, gameplay style, because, like, uh, there's a lot of emphasis put on, instead of, like, just, like, seeing how many times you can hit your sword on the enemy, there's a lot of emphasis put on, like, I guess, kind of, like, dodging attacks and uh, swinging your sword at, like, the right moment, because, hmm. like, the way the weapons work is that, like, they have a recharge time, basically, whenever you use it. If you don't, if you use your weapon before the recharge time is done, it won't do that much damage. Okay. You're basically, like, encouraged to go in, like, uh... I guess only use your like sword when you actually need to. Okay, so you're encouraged to use um, different abilities depending on the situation and all that. Yeah. Okay. Not wonderful. Got the president in this game. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear he looks completely different from what he looked like in SA2. <laughs> I haven't. I don't remember uh, exactly because it's been a while, but. The United Federation will never surrender to terrorists. Yes, Mr. The United Federation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I uh, Jason, Jason's uh, show me a screenshot of the um, new Marisonic Olympic game, and there's it's, there's a part where I think it was Donkey Kong just says, "I <laughs> I wanted to see." Um, the um the the view from the government building or something <laughs> and it's just hysterical hearing dk say that yeah <laughs> you talking about the government building you can even imagine that like it's such a weird crossover mario and sonic with the olympic games it's like one of those like really it's like one of those things where like when you see it you're just like whoa like if you told someone from like the 90s that this would happen like they wouldn't even believe you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I do like that um, the story mode in the new game has a lot of interesting gameplay uh, ideas. So I know there's one point where I think you ride the tornado and it's like a it's like a side scrolling shoot 'em up. What? Oh wow. That's right. I haven't and actually with Sonic at the Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually played the game yet, but um, it's. Definitely interesting how they like the story mode specifically really interests me because of that. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. They bring so much effort into that. Yeah, because I know, I believe the general. Let me just check the route for this. Okay, I would. We can do the dark mission here. Um. The um. The whole story mode in the new game is like completely completely different from what the Olympic Games usually are, which is pretty much just a minigame collection and mm -hmm. not much else. So I kind of like that they tried something unique with the new one. Yeah, that's cool. So I always remember those games are just like, oh, it's like you pick between a bunch of different like events, right? You do track yeah. and field or like hula hoops or I don't know, whatever weird things they have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much all it boiled down to. Like, um, mm. like I pretty pretty much just go through all the events and with the exception of like maybe random side modes after that's basically all the game game is which is fine like it's a it's a fun like multiplayer like mini game collection um yeah so yeah, it's really good if you have friends or but if you're like yeah. playing single player you're just gonna be like oh I'm just doing these events, basically. Yeah, like, after you do the events once, it's like, there's not much else for you to do at that point. <laughs> yeah, like, have you ever played the uh, Mario and Sonic at Olympic Games, like, arcade game they have? Like, in arcades? Like, oh, I didn't know that existed. What is that? Oh, yeah, like, uh, like, where I live, they have, they have it occasionally, like, at some, like, bowling places. Hmm. Yeah, so, like, over there, I, like, uh, read it out. It's pretty... It's interesting because like they actually have like a full like um basically setup where it like has like the pressure sensitive pads and everything so like it'll check like when you're jumping and stuff and you can actually like detect that oh that's really cool uh what um events do they have in that i think it was based off of the winter games like one from like what was it, the previous game which came out what was it? like the 2018 i think Okay. Right, right, right. The Sochi 2014. They have like, uh, I think it's also a 2016 version too. Okay. Get up the arcade version. That's really cool, actually. I didn't know. I didn't know about any of this. 
Oh yeah, th yeah, there we go. Mario and Sonic Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 Arcade Edition. There oh, okay. Yeah, so they have like, oh, okay. So apparently they have they have 100 meters, discus throw, gymnastics, rugby, sports climbing, surfing, swimming, and triple jump in it. Hmm. And then they also have 1964 events too. <laughs> oh yeah, I f yeah, I remember that. That's like a new thing in the in the uh, in the um, new game as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. That they're actually like uh, covering the old like Tokyo games too. Yeah. Like. And they have it in like old, um, eight bit, sixteen bit style, because it's weird because like, uh, the Mario characters are eight bit, and then Sonic stuff is sixteen bit. Oh, that's strange. But... Yeah. I like whether they're actually like acknowledging that like Japan like had the uh, Olympic Games in nineteen sixty four as well. Yeah. Have you ever actually, like, seen, like, uh, how the, like, 64, like, games were, like, played out? Like, if you look at the opening ceremony of, like, those Olympic games, it's, like, very different hmm. from what you would expect. So That's... think about how it was in, like, 1964 compared to, like, now. Japan was just, like, slowly, like, recovering from, like, uh, the war, basically. Oh, that makes and, sense, like, yeah. In their general, like, in, like, demeanor, I guess, it was very, very, like, westernized, you could tell. Like, they very much tried to, like, I guess, kind of erase, like, their culture when they, like, mm. uh, presented themselves in the games. Yeah, that make I guess that makes sense, yeah. yeah it makes a lot of sense. So, like, when you see, like, these games, right, it's gonna be probably very, very different. Like, Japan's gonna go all out with, like, all their stuff. Yeah. Well done, Shadow. Well done, Shadow. <laughs> yeah, you killed Destroy people. <laughs> Who is this little guy who's with Shadow this entire time? Is that like an alien thing? Oh, the, the, this eye thing. It's basically uh, just a, 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 I don't know what you'd call it, but it's um ba pretty much a third eye for Black Doom for him to just follow Shadow around and just make him do a thing, I guess. Uh, it's pretty, pretty much enough. It's pretty much just there for gameplay context and not much else. Oh, uh, okay. What? He's just kind of there for the plot. Yeah. Uh, no real gameplay, like, uh, effects. Okay. Not really, no. Yeah. That guy looked like he came out of, like, Sonic Colors or something. But... Yeah. I think this is, a, this is a, um, cutscene that's kind of a special case where, um, the sky will actually be different depending on which stage you came from, I believe. Oh, wow. Oh, is this like, uh, what is this? this is from Sonic Adventure 2, I think, when they're at the space station? I yeah, I think this is a flashback stage. Hmm. Okay, so, uh... Oh, this... Uh, this, this... Okay, this stage sucks. <laughs> Doom. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of two indoor arc levels. And the problem with them is that everything looks so much <laughs> everything looks so much this like the like the same thing. Um so <laughs> it's just a complete mess like trying to find what you're looking for. Um so <laughs> I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go the neutral path just to make it easier on us because otherwise this stage can go up to like upwards to like 30 minutes. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, like um, the the hero mission, it, I I can just kill everyone. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, like the hero mission, you have to you have to uh, revive the researchers, um, and dark mission, you have to kill. I think I think sixty is basically all the enemies, um, oh. and the fact that like everything looks the same, you're kind of just gonna be wandering around all over the place and getting lost like all the time, and it it just takes forever to find everything. Like the only good thing I can say is that um, the checkpoints. I don't think I've actually talked about this yet, but like. The way the checkpoints work is that they're pretty much a, um, you can pretty much use them to warp around the level, so 
issue like get a checkpoint at the end uh you can use that checkpoint to like walk back to the first checkpoint at the start of the stage which is really helpful for something like this where you're looking for specific things I see. but at the same time like i said uh, it also just it's also just confusing to navigate this level in the first place so oh yeah, yeah this good place luck just like giant labyrinth and like you don't yeah. even need a little map at all just to go and help you out so like no nah, like th this game would benefit a lot from like a, m a map or a radar or something but you're kind of just forced to go on your own and just hope you know what you're doing <laughs> yeah these the th hmm oh i said also oh, the mission you're doing right now is like just start uh, blowing up like those bombs or something? Uh, the neutral mission is always just get to the goal, which is what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Um, cause I, I remember having the worst time in this stage. Like this is probably the worst stage in the game. Like this and the other indoor arc level are widely considered the worst stages in this game. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think just doing a neutral mission will just make this a lot less painful on us. Yeah. So just seems like a good time saver. Yeah. Given so, all these enemies, like. <laughs> yeah, just ignore everything. Um, so the thing you only need to w watch out for is like, as long as you're reaching checkpoints, that pretty much tells you you're going the right direction. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, so now you're kind of like going back in a way, because like those places are already blown up, right? Presumably by you back in the past. I suppose yeah this is a this is a weird stage because it's like i never really quite understood what was going on here like did it's like it's like is this the shadow from the past with black doom now it's like did black doom do something to make him go back here like i don't i never really understood this but it's it's kind of weird Because the plot doesn't know what it's doing. It's, it's yeah. Because right. I guess Black Doom just kind of has the power to show Shadow the past, I guess. Yeah, this is like Chris a Christmas Carol now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. The, the idea of these stages is alright, I guess. Like, I don't mind the idea of these. Yeah, it seems like in theory this game would have been like a really cool like idea like when it comes to like oh like you can go and like choose a dark path or like light path you can pick yeah. whatever you want yeah i think like in like uh, reality i guess like what ended up happening is they kind of just messed up on a lot of things in yeah the of everything for what it, for what it's worth i the, with the exception of uh, the the sta uh, these stages, um, I I think a lot of the level design is in this game is, fi I I'd consider a lot of it f uh, fine to actually pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of stages that I'd consider like flat out bad in terms of level design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that stage just seemed. It seems a bit labyrinth-like. It reminds me a bit of labyrinth stone, I guess, in a way. I suppose I could kind of see that. Yeah. So of course, that's completely different, but, um... <clears throat> Alright, what's the next stage gonna be now? After we get a million load screens. Oh, yes. Oh, we got a boss. That Maria models looks really weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's such giant eyes, like. Yeah. Because they're trying to do some, like, magical girl stuff with her, but, like. Yeah, it looks kind of weird.
It's in a way, it seems that like Shadow just got taken to the past. Yeah. And who knows about what's gonna happen in the future. Hmm. I don't remember this thing being, uh, <laughs> the one that shot Maria, but okay. <laughs> took a, bit of li a few liberties with the past. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess there's, like, the whole, like, messing with time. It's like, if you change anything in the past, it's gonna just cause, like, a time paradox or something. Yeah. It's like the butterfly effect. Like the yeah. smallest changes in the past can like cause large changes in the future. Yeah. I I just find like the multiverse very really fascinating because it's like like these small changes could have changed reality like soup like really drastically. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the idea of like having like uh, multiple universes and stuff. But... Yeah. That's the only issue is that you can't exactly like travel between them. Yeah, go <laughs> just imagine uh, going to like a different reality and just meeting your female version. <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much to say about this guy. It's pretty much just take out the missile tanks. And they'll give you uh, these. Uh, it'll basically give you this um, rocket launcher, mm -hmm. and you just shoot him like mad. Yeah. Shadow just casually handling a bazooka, shooting down everything. <laughs> yeah. How dare you harm Maria, disgusting humans! <laughs> 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 this is fantastic voice acting. <laughs> How the edge intensifies. Okay, I legitimately don't remember what the next stage is gonna be. Oh boy. Oh, I think I know what this is now. This is a fun stage. Sir, please. Once again. I have failed my duty to protect our own nation. Sir, it's not over. We can continue to fight. The black aliens may have rendered us unable for now, but we will rally, sir. You must keep your nation strong and together. Yes. Keep the nation united. No matter what happens, we'll never surrender to these creatures. Why does the president seem so evil? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, please hurry. Okay. The black creatures will feel their own bloody hell. Is that cursing in a Sonic game? Sonic yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like the worst it gets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a pathetic sight. Shadow. I like how they, they were just kind of outside here the whole time and they didn't see them. Yeah. Just chilling outside the White House. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you, you'd think the commander would just be like, Ah, the, like Shadow and <laughs> the alien, like the leader of the aliens is right there, like shoot him now. <laughs> yeah, no, screw it, let's, let's just fly off. Oh, hi Tails. Wait, yeah. where did you come from? <laughs> yeah, Tails is just kind of hit. Like, the the game kind of just arbitrarily decides, um, like, what characters to put in stages. And uh, sometimes it makes sense, and other times it doesn't. Um, yeah, like, Tails wasn't even in the plot before. Like, he just yeah. appeared. <laughs> yeah. Like, the game is more concerned, is more concerned about, um, what, uh, stage you go to rather than the what the story context is so it makes a lot it makes it, it can make uh, some things a complete mess which is pretty funny sometimes it makes me wonder like what if like all these like i guess like characters who appeared like actually appeared in the plot too 
Mm. I feel like it would make this game a lot stronger, like when it comes to like consistency. Yeah. Yo, Shadow of the Hedgehog remake. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. So the uh, the whole goal of the dark mission here is you literally have to uh, gun down the president's uh, aircraft. <laughs> so you just kind of do this the whole time. It's great. <laughs> How did this game get released in America? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a t kind of a tease too, though, but because you'll see in the next cutscene right after this that the the president ends up like uh, surviving this anyway, and like <laughs> he lands per like he uh, goes to his destination perfectly fine. So kind of ruins the whole point of this. <laughs> Yeah, what's the point of this then? Yeah, I don't know. What is gunning down the president's aircraft make you lose dark points? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is just... There's not much to say about this, this is just kind of dumb fun. <laughs> and the infinite ammo helps quite a lot. Oh yeah. You also gotta make sure you change the um, direction of some of these paths so the aircraft goes to where the gun soldiers are because um, it slow it slows the aircraft down and it also uh, ma makes you go to where gun soldiers are which is good for just replenishing your ammo and whatnot. <laughs> just kind of do this I guess wait for it to car come over Oh yeah, can you aim, like, towards it? Or is it just auto-aim? Uh, it's completely auto-aim, like, the- um, there are some weapons where, like, the rocket launchers, where you're- you have to aim manually, but most of the weapons just aim enemies on their own. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, it works well, well enough, like, the aiming system in this game is pretty solid for the most part. I don't usually have issues with the guns in this game. Okay. I love the fact that, like, uh, what's his name? Like, the evil alien, like, he's just giving you tips. <laughs> yeah. And his evil voice. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like... Goku. No, I, I forget if it's Goku or Vegeta's voice actor. Oh. Which is kind of hilarious. I think he's just giving some really evil voice. <laughs> Something. Yeah. <laughs> ah. No. 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 Go back. Oh dang it, okay, fine. Yeah, the way he's speaking, you would consider it AS I would consider it like ASMR at this point. Nowadays, like Yeah. I don't want oh. him to come and kill me. Cause the, the f a big issue with this game is that uh no matter what you do, every every kind of enemy is gonna end up attacking you. Uh which is mm. it's kind of defeats the point of a morality system if like everyone's just gonna yeah. come and kill you anyway. <laughs> yeah. That is a bit strange, this system. If it's like not like it feels like this game kind of like was rushed in a way. Like mm. you know, like a lot of things that they wanted probably to go and get done. Like they couldn't get done on time. Yeah. Cause I know um like like just a year after this game it was o they had O six and from what I've heard, I could be completely wrong, but I've heard that they pretty much um, paused development of 06 to make this game, um, mm -hmm. which I guess in a lot of ways that would make sense. Mm -hmm. That would make a lot of sense. Like this, I guess both of those games being developed at the same time kind of like messed up the general like developments of both. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of potential in both of these. 
Because both this game and 06 had like some very strange like mechanics and like problems with it, it seems. Yeah. But this game is at least like works properly. It doesn't have any crazy game breaking bugs. Yeah, this is definitely the uh, lesser Eve. I, I would de I definitely um oh I almost fell off there. <laughs> um the I I definitely play this game over OSX. Yeah. Like I I have issues with this game but most of it doesn't want me to uh want me to just stop playing. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no like first stuff going right on like Yeah. So like, there are some missions that are like kind of annoying, but I don't think it ever gets so sex bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell. Like, I would be able to play this game. Would be like actually have a lot of fun playing it, like mm -hmm. stuff like this. Or I've seen 06 though. I think like that game's like one of those where like it's just so bad you have to just, you laugh at it as you're playing it. <laughs> like, yeah. Kind of gonna annoy you at some points. Yeah, it's one of those games where it's. It's really funny watching it, but for mm -hmm. me, uh, for my experience anyway, like playing it, I just it's a mi for me it's a mix of being bored and also frustrated, and I just it's not a great combination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've I've only seen gameplay of O Six. I've never actually properly played the game yet. Oh god, I didn't. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I wasn't trying to. Jump dash. Okay, that's fine. We're like right before that section. These guys are just sitting there, they're just kind of like trying to bump into you, like. Yeah. I'm not even trying. <laughs> oh, I, I oh, guess. There you go. I, I guess the uh, I, I guess the plane wasn't uh, didn't reset its health, so it it I thought that choice. it was at the same I health bar. Know the truth. Mm, that's strange. Okay. Works. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it easier. It makes it easier on us. Okay. And that was just completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know how that works. We just blew up the plane, and the president's just still chilling. Yeah. Sir, are you all yeah. Right? Never mind me. What about the people of Central City? No need to worry, sir. Orders were issued yesterday, and everyone has been evacuated. Yeah, Central City, as far as I'm aware, is the same place for Mass A2. Uh. going on commander the invaders estimated over a thousand black aliens inbound they've penetrated our outer perimeter what according to reports shadows also been oh. sided with the black I didn't aliens. actually know this this game was basically created by the US division Shadow? sonic team I don't oh well, I hmm I guess that makes sense yeah yeah, given the entire game and it's like you know, premise and like, guns and everything, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. It's weird. Yeah. Because this game came out during the whole uh, edgy uh, phase of of uh, cartoony platformers with like Jack Two and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like having like. Serious plots in Sonic games is really strange when you're like dealing with like all these cartoonish hedgehogs and stuff. Like, yeah, I can understand that. I do like um, a bit of a bit of a mix um, where it's more, something more the long, along the lines of like Unleashed, where um, the there's a lot of goofing around and whatnot, but it never mm -hmm. comes to jokes every five seconds or sound ends up becoming like a parody of itself like the newer games tend yeah. to be um mm -hmm. but yeah this and 06 i feel uh go i feel like go a bit too far in the other direction 
Yeah, this game, like, really seems to, like, take its plot very seriously. Oh, six, yeah. I remember. Oh, God. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... Like, I just recently, like, watched the AVGN review for 06. Oh. <laughs> like, and I was reminded at that point, I was like, wait a second, I remember this, like, all trash in this game. Yeah. And what the plot was and everything. Yeah. I appreciate them for, like, sticking to their guns and, like, like pl uh, playing the story straight and, like, uh, as messy and honestly bad as the story is, um, I appreciate them for, um, just trying to their best to tell the story at the end of the day and not um yeah. backing backing off on it if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah like they tried their best to create like a realistic version of like sonic or at least sonic in a more realistic world yeah it didn't work at all but um no <laughs> they tried their best i think this game did a i feel like overall this game did a better job with it than 06 did but yeah, uh, the not necessarily the be the uh, best thing to uh, say, like, saying you're better than 06 isn't really the best accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. But still, it is worth that, I guess. Yeah, I do like how they handled the humans in this game. They look a little bit, like, better and less, like, there's less of, like, a stark diff contrast between the humans and, like, the, uh, like, hedgehog. Yeah, I think, I think the humans worked in this game and the adventure games because... Um, they're working on less powerful hardware, so they naturally just fit in better because of it, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas 06 is... Because they went for a more realistic style, it just didn't fit well. Yeah, it doesn't look great at all. Like, yeah. It's kind of like the uh, new Sonic movie. Like, I still haven't watched it yet, but like, I remember when, like, when they created that trailer, for the first trailer for Sonic movie. Oh no, like, it was terrible. Oh yeah, that was like the talk of the internet for a while. Yeah, and like when they eventually made Sonic more cartoony, it's like... It actually just looks a lot better, just making him like look very cartoony. But... Yeah, because it was like really... found it re find it really silly like bringing... like making live action uh, movies of these cartoon characters and, and being like... Um, oh, let's make them realistic and like whatnot when... The whole point should be that they're supposed to stick out from the human characters and whatnot. So I exactly like yeah. I think right now, like the Pokemon movie is probably the best like example of how exactly you would go and make a like more realistic version of like a game video game characters. Hmm. That's when something else I need to watch as well. I, I haven't watched that or the Sonic movie yet. Yeah, I still haven't watched the Sonic movie. But I highly recommend the Pokemon movie. Like that game. That movie was like very well made. Mm, I've seen to, clips like, uh, of it. it. It looks really fun. Yeah. Like I would, I wouldn't say like the plot isn't anything like super groundbreaking or anything, but like when it comes to video game movies, that game or that movie is like king. <laughs> mm. Like I've watched the Mario movie before. Oh, that's horrendous. <laughs> oh, I I remember. I a funny story with that. Um, I think I I did. Oh no, what it was. I was doing a versus uh, for Rayman Raving Rabbids with Jason. And um, he ended up like, what we did was basically, if if one of us got more points in a mini game, then that would be like a point for them. And Jason ended up getting the most points. So my lose requirements was watch the Mario movie. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, we basically just got a small group together to watch that, and my, it was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that thing is horrible. Yeah, yeah. Mario movie, like, I don't know what they were thinking when they created that. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, uh, me so <laughs> Apparently, like, Miyamoto was, like, found the fact that, like, they had it as... Mario Mario and Luigi Mario hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I hope that's not considered a, like an act, like an actual canon thing, because it's like so stupid. Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I know there's like supposed to be an animated movie by like Illumination at some point, so hopefully oh, that's yeah, yeah. decent. 
I know Illumination is very hit, hit or miss, but... Illumination. I've never heard of that studio, what they made, but I don't know. I feel like it's hard to get worse than the, Mar the original Mario. Yeah, I don't think it's... I, I, I doubt it's gonna end up being that bad. I assume it's... At worst, I'm hoping it's gonna be mediocre, but I'd like it, I'd like it to be good. I don't really know what you do for a Mario movie though, like... Like, Mario feels like a series that just works better as a game rather than, like, a film. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think, I don't know, like, looking at the Paper Mario games and Super Mario RPG, like, those games really, like, uh, prove how it is possible to make a fantastic Mario, like, plotline in a Mario game. I definitely yeah. think that they would have to, like, handle something like that to go and create a good movie. Yeah. Make the toads an integral part, because, like, ah. they were fantastic in Mario RPG and Paper Mario, like, how they, like, uh, handled the dialogue for them and all the other characters that were really zany and stuff. You have to make it really goofy. Yeah. Like, make a good movie. I'd, I'd love to see, like, a Mario RPG kind of story be, be told in, like, on, like, the big screen. Because mm -hmm. I feel like doing that instead of just a g generic say the princess adventure story would be um a lot more interesting yeah like i think like my favorite type of stories is like Mario rpg and like um, super Paper mario both do this where like basically you don't have bowser as the main villain what you do is you just have it so it's like mario bowser peach and like and like others they all like work together basically to fight some like other villain and i think like when you have like a plot like that it like creates a really nice dynamic that would like yeah be perfect for a play a movie. It would also be nice to see like RPG kind of Bowser as well. Because mm -hmm. I Bow Bowser is probably my favorite Mario character, and one of the reasons is that he's just hilarious in the RPGs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love how they handle him. Like they they like make his interaction with his minions in like Paper Mario like really good. Like yeah, there's always like a lot of humor going on. It's just very goofy how they handle it, but like, when things get serious, they get serious, like. Yeah, because they, like, um, and Bowser's basically a treat as, like, this massive goofball. I told you, no one tells me what to do. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, which Mario RPGs have you played? Um, I've played... Uh, most of the Mario and Luigi games. I've played Superstar Saga, um, Bowser's Inside Story, and the most of Dream Team. Um, and I've... Unfortunately, I haven't played much, much else. I haven't played Super uh, Mario RPG, and the only Paper Mario game I've played to completion is Super. Um, I've seen a lot of 64 and Thousand Year Door, and I remember playing like five minutes of Sticker Star because someone, one of my friends, oh. <laughs> brought, <laughs> brought it over at, uh, to school once, and mm -hmm. I wasn't impressed. Yeah, Sticker Star is cursed. So yeah, Thousand Year Door, I highly recommend you get to that game yeah. sometime. I really wish Nintendo made it more accessible. Yeah. Right now, you're basically your only option is buying it on the GameCube and or just like emulating it through Wii, through like, Pack Wii. Yeah, cause I I, I remember, f like, uh, seeing, Thousand Year Door for about thirty or forty bucks one time, mm -hmm. and like online, that game goes for ridiculous amounts, and mm -hmm. yeah. it it makes me it makes me wish Nintendo did like a GameCube Virtual Console or like just release these games again in general because, GameCube games. Like, some GameCube games are, like, stupid rare, and finding mm. a copy of them that's not, like, ridiculous amounts of money is really hard. Yeah, like... Like, the old Smash games now are just getting really rare. Like, Smash 64 has been re-released, but then Melee has never been re-released yet. Yeah. Ever since its original, like, launch. It's like... I think currently, like, GameCube is now, like, the era, basically, that Nintendo needs to focus on when it comes to remakes and re-releases. Like, they've already started with, like, Wind Waker HD, and, like, Twilight well, like, Princess they've released again for, like, the 9 million time on the Wii U. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised that, I was surprised that, um, 
Mario Sunshine specifically never got a remake, because I, I felt for certain that was like the next thing in line after the Zelda ones, but it just never happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's really strange, because, like, they remade Mario 64 on the DS, and you would think on the 3DS maybe they would make a Sunshine remake, but, like, no, yeah. they, never did, they never did that. Like, yeah, I would love to see, like, a Sunshine remake. Yeah. Sorry, it really feels like the GameCube era is kind of like a forgotten era right now in Nintendo. Yeah, which which sucks, because the that's... Um, before the Switch, that uh, the GameCube was probably my favorite console for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many great games on it that like yeah, it's like like people nowadays are like missing out on like Mario Kart Double Dash is still like such a unique game. Yeah, that's like, still that's, one of my favorite games in the series. Like that one, I still play with friends occasionally. Like sometimes, like they'll just come over and I'll be like, let's play some Double Dash, and then hmm. get it all set up. Finally, I've got <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I I don't uh, usually meet up with people anymore, so I uh, I don't really get the chance to do that but yeah mm -hmm. double dash i used to i used to play that a lot with siblings growing up and like just friends and whatnot it's like i just love how unique that game is yeah all the dynamics like i think that like going back to like a system like that for the next mario kart game would be really fun if they were yeah. to try to like um... yeah <laughs> something like that let's see Oh, credits? Wait, what? Yeah. The game's over? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's the end of that story. Um, so the funny thing about this ending is that it's arguably even more dark than the actual dark ending of this route because the dark, the pretty much the only difference is um, the dark ending shadows evil and he's on Black Doom's side. The hero ending is just pretty much no, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to side with Black Doom. I'll just take over the world on my own. Let's screw everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. got this one where, like, oh. <laughs> I feel like that was so sudden. Like, it's a bit strange, like, when you, like, see a Sonic game play through. It's like that. This game is surprisingly short. Like, mm. wow. Like, that was almost, like, two hours, maybe? Mm. Yeah, Less it's... than two hours, right? Yeah, it's like... That's a thing with this game where... One story playthrough doesn't take that long, but it adds up when you have to do all 10 endings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where your 20 hours then comes in. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty stupid though. How... Yeah, I'm not a fan of how this game structures its progression. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Japanese character voices. Ooh, they threw those in there. Oh yeah. So is there anything else you want to touch on before uh, this these credits end? I guess. I can't really think of too much really. Any closing thoughts or anything? Like I don't know. This game seems like basically like seems like the Sonic game where it's like they really tried an experimental idea. Like, when they started getting really experimental with the gameplay and everything, and, like, trying to, like, try new things, this was definitely a step, like, where they had some great intentions in terms of, like, what to do with the gameplay, and, like, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of the features in this game, like, you could see, like, more modern games that, like, have, like, fully realized the ideas of, like, morality system and how to properly implement that. Oh, like, the way that the actual, like, game ended up coming out, it seems kind of flat, I guess, in the end. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can agree with that. Like I, yeah, I, I again, I, I don't, I don't mind the, a lot of the ideas in this game, but the way they went about it wasn't really the greatest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still very entertaining though. How <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shadow riding on a motorbike and like yeah. shooting people down with guns. And, like, yeah, it's. <laughs> I guess the the humor comes from the fact that like it does take itself so seriously. Yeah. Looks like some kind of like like if you look at this like just this cutscene right here like they're showing right now it looks like some kind of like Michael Bay movie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's explosions everywhere, like people shooting each other down. Then the yeah. aliens are coming in. The government can't do anything. Like <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> 
looks like some kind of like Transformers type thing. <laughs> like before that game even came out, Samurai Blades at level two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So <laughs> that's that done. Um. So um, I think that's like five endings cleared now. Yeah. So nice. we're about halfway through the game now. Um. So. Yeah. Um. You got anything else to say, or is that it? I got nothing else. Okay. So, um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next story playthrough. Yeah, see ya.